adds you flavor too. Elements are sugar free and so fresh they take your breath away. Bar none, the supreme chocolate extravaganza. Back in the past, candies loved by many vanished from the shelves of stores. These candies, once famous and cherished, became tales of nostalgia due to changes in consumer preferences and intense competition. So join us as we uncover the stories behind these 20 famous candies that faded into history. Some folks don't believe the super fruitiness of bonkers fruit candy. They learn soon enough. <laughs> bonkers. Bonkers was a fruit-flavored chewy candy with a unique fruity filling introduced by Nabisco in the 1980s. These candies were popular in the United States and featured vibrant fun commercials that boosted their initial success. Bonkers came in various fruity flavors like grape, orange, and strawberry and watermelon, each with a matching fruity center that added an extra burst of flavor. They were sold in grocery stores and convenience stores across the country, typically costing around 25 cents per pack. The candy gained a strong following due to its distinctive taste and playful marketing. However, despite its early popularity, Bonkers faced stiff competition from other fruit candies and gum. By the early 90s, Nabisco discontinued Bonkers due to declining sales and changing consumer preferences. Efforts to revive the brand in the 2010s were made by Leaf Brands, a company known for bringing back nostalgic treats. However, these attempts did not regain the same level of popularity leading to Bonkers once again fading from store shelves. Bonkers remains a fond memory for many who enjoyed its unique flavor and the quirky advertisements, but it ultimately could not sustain its place in the competitive candy market. But what happened to the Gator Gum, a unique chewing gum of the 80s? Gator Gum, its unique mouth-watering formula turns on the juice. So if you want to lick dry mouth, Gator Gum Gator Gum was a unique chewing gum introduced in the 1980s by the makers of Gatorade, Stokely Van Camp. It was designed to quench thirst, featuring the same electrolyte replenishing formula found in Gatorade sports drinks. Gator Gum came in citrus flavors like lemon, lime, and orange, aiming to provide a refreshing experience similar to drinking Gatorade. This gum was sold primarily in the United States and could be found in grocery stores, convenience stores, and sports venues. A pack of Gator gum typically cost around 25 to 35 cents, making it an affordable option for those looking for a quick refreshment during physical activities. In spite of its innovative concept and initial popularity among athletes and active individuals, Gator gum faced several challenges. The gum's market success was limited by its niche appeal and the growing competition from other gum and candy brands. Moreover, consumers often preferred the original Gatorade drink for hydration purposes, which overshadowed the gum's unique selling point. By the late 1980s, sales of Gator gum began to decline, leading to its discontinuation. Attempts to revive it years later did not gain significant traction. Today, Gator gum is remembered as a curious but ultimately short-lived experiment in the sports and candy market. Discover the wonderful world of fizzies. Come on in. All boys and girls are welcome. Fizzies. Fizzies were popular drink tablets introduced in the late 1950s by the Emerson Drug Company. These tablets, available in flavors like cherry, grape, and root beer, are dissolved in water to create a fizzy flavored drink similar to soda. They were sold in grocery stores and pharmacies across the U.S and cost about 25 cents per pack. Fizzies were a hit among children and parents alike, offering a fun and affordable alternative to bottled sodas. However, their success waned in the 1960s when concerns about one of their artificial sweeteners, cyclamate, led to regulatory scrutiny and a temporary ban. Although Fizzies made a comeback in the 1990s with a reformulated recipe, they couldn't regain their former popularity. The rise of other beverages and changing consumer taste further hindered their market presence. Today, fizzies are fondly remembered as a nostalgic treat, but are no longer widely available. As kids savored the fizzy delights of fizzies, they were unaware of another sweet sensation looming on the horizon. What was this Summit Bar, whose tantalizing layers promised a taste of indulgence amidst the candy aisle frenzy? 
by Summit Candy Bars. A delicious break anytime. Crunchy roasted peanuts. Lots of rich chocolate. And a crispy center. Summit Bar. The Summit Bar, introduced by Mars Incorporated in the late 1970s, was a delicious treat with layers of wafers, peanuts, and a chocolate coating. Sold across the U.S., this candy bar cost around 35 cents. It quickly became a favorite due to its satisfying crunch and rich flavor combination. Despite its initial success, the Summit Bar faced fierce competition from other popular candy bars like Snickers and Kit Kat. Its sales began to decline in the early 1980s as consumers gravitated towards more well-known brands. Additionally, marketing efforts for the Summit Bar were not as robust as those for its competitors, which impacted its visibility and popularity. By the mid-1980s, Mars decided to discontinue the Summit Bar due to declining sales and market preference for other products. While it remains a nostalgic memory for those who enjoyed it, the Summit Bar ultimately couldn't maintain its foothold in the crowded candy market. Tongue Splashers Tongue Splashers were a fun and quirky bubblegum introduced in the late 1980s by the Concord Confections Company. These gumballs came in vibrant colors like red, blue, green, and purple, and their unique selling point was their ability to temporarily change the color of the chewer's tongue to match the gum. Sold in candy stores, convenience stores, and grocery stores across the U.S., tongue splashers typically cost around 25 cents each. The gum quickly became a hit with children who loved the playful aspect of the tongue changing colors, making it a popular treat at schools and playgrounds. Its marketing was effective, often focusing on the fun and mischievous element of surprising friends with a brightly colored tongue. Despite its initial popularity, tongue splashers faced challenges as health and safety concerns about artificial colorings grew in the 1990s. Parents began to prefer candies with more natural ingredients, and the demand for such novelty products declined. Additionally, competition from other novelty gums and changing consumer taste contributed to a drop in sales. By the early 2000s, tongue splashers were phased out of production. Today, they are remembered fondly as a playful candy that brought joy and colorful tongues to a generation of kids. Chicken Dinner Candy Bar The Chicken Dinner Candy Bar was an unusual treat sold by the Sperry Candy Company. Launched in the 20s, this nougat bar packed with nuts was cleverly marketed to imply it was as hearty as a full meal. This was appealing during the tough economic times of the Great Depression. Priced affordably at just five cents, it quickly became popular across the United States. The name and packaging featuring a chicken dinner made it stand out in the crowded candy market. Notwithstanding its initial success, changing consumer taste and the rise of new candy options led to its decline. By the 1960s, the Chicken Dinner Candy Bar faded into history as healthier snacks and modern branding trends took over, ending its quirky reign in the candy aisle. After you reflect on the Chicken Dinner Candy Bar's rise and eventual decline, you might think about other candies that experienced similar fates. What about the Bitto Chuck? Did it manage to withstand the changing tides of consumer preference, or did it too succumb to the ever-evolving candy landscape? Bitter honey, candy bar. Bitter honey, six pieces of chewing, long-lasting candy with nuts and just a bit of honey. Bitto Chalk. Bitto Chalk was a delightful chocolate caramel candy produced by the Shooter Johnson Company, the same company behind the popular Bitto Honey. Launched in the mid-20th century, Bitto Chalk was marketed as a chewy, chocolatey treat similar in texture to its honey-flavored sibling. Sold primarily in the United States, this candy was priced at around 30 cents, making it a common choice for kids and adults looking for a sweet indulgence. Bitto Chalk Bars were often found in corner stores and candy shops and even included in Halloween trick-or-treat bags. They were quite successful initially, riding on the coattails of Bitto Honey's popularity. However, in spite of its initial appeal, Bitto Chalk faced stiff competition from other chocolate-based candies and caramels that began to flood the market. As consumer preferences evolved, the demand for Bitto Chalk dwindled. The rise of new and innovative candies, combined with changes in marketing strategies, contributed to its decline. 
Moreover, the Shooter Johnson Company eventually merged with other confectionery companies, and the focus shifted to more profitable products. By the late 20th century, Bitto Chalk had disappeared from store shelves. Hershey's Bar None, chocolate wafers, chocolate cream, peanuts, and pure milk chocolate. Hershey's Bar None. Hershey's Bar None was introduced by the Hershey Company in 1986. This unique candy bar featured a delicious combination of chocolate, a crispy cocoa wafer, chocolate cream, and crunchy peanuts, all coated in rich milk chocolate. Initially sold across the U.S., Bar None was priced competitively, making it an appealing option for chocolate lovers seeking something different from the usual fare. The bar quickly gained a following due to its rich, layered texture and satisfying taste, enjoying significant success in its early years. It was often found in grocery stores, convenience stores, and vending machines, becoming a popular choice for a sweet snack. However, Bar None faced challenges. Changes in consumer preferences towards simpler, less complex chocolate bars and the introduction of new, trendier candies led to a decline in sales. In an effort to revive interest, Hershey reformulated the bar in the early 90s, adding caramel and breaking it into two smaller bars per package. However, this change did not recapture its original fan base. Ultimately, Hershey's Bar None was discontinued in 1997, marking the end of its decade-long run. Milkshake! Milkshake! Now made into a candy bar! Milkshake Bar the milkshake bar created by the Hollywood Candy Company in the 1920s was a popular treat that featured a malt-flavored nougat covered in creamy milk chocolate. Sold primarily in the U.S., it was priced affordably at around 5 cents, making it a common choice for children and adults alike. The bar's rich malty taste and chewy texture made it a beloved snack, often found in local grocery stores and candy shops. In spite of its early success and wide appeal, the Milkshake Bar faced increasing competition from other chocolate and nougat candies as the market evolved. By the mid-20th century, changes in consumer preferences and the rise of new, innovative candies began to overshadow it. Additionally, corporate mergers and shifts in focus within the Hollywood Candy Company led to its discontinuation. By the 1980s, the Milkshake Bar had faded into history, remembered fondly by those who enjoyed its distinctive flavor. The milkshake bar's popularity waned amidst evolving taste and market changes. Two Keebler Magic Middles. Try one. Kavow! Crisp cookie outside, luscious melted chocolatey filling inside. Magic Middles. Magic Middles was a beloved snack created by Keebler, the famous cookie company. Introduced in the 1980s, these cookies featured a unique twist. They were filled with either chocolate or peanut butter. Sold across the United States, Magic Middles were priced affordably at five cents and often found in grocery stores and convenience stores. Their success stemmed from the combination of Keebler's reputation for delicious cookies and the irresistible allure of a hidden filling. Consumers enjoyed the surprise of biting into a cookie to discover a gooey center of chocolate or peanut butter. However, despite their popularity, Magic Middles faced challenges. Changes in consumer taste and preferences, as well as increased competition in the cookie market, led to declining sales. Keebler eventually discontinued Magic Middles, leaving fans nostalgic for the delightful cookie with the magical middle. Much like the beloved Magic Middles, Tato Skins also faced their share of challenges in the competitive snack market of the 80s. But what led to the decline of these hearty potato snacks? Keebler presents the appealing taste of baked potato skins in a crunchy chip. Tato Skins Tato Skins were a snack chip sold by Keebler, a well-known cookie and snack company. Launched in the 1980s, Tato Skins were made from real potato skins, giving them a unique and hearty flavor. They were sold primarily in the United States and were priced competitively at 15 cents, making them a popular choice for consumers looking for a crunchy and savory snack. Initially, Tato Skins enjoyed considerable success, with their distinctive taste and texture appealing to snack enthusiasts. They were often found in grocery stores, convenience stores, and vending machines across the country. However, notwithstanding their early popularity, Tato Skins faced challenges as the snack market became more crowded and consumer preferences shifted towards healthier options. 
Keebler eventually discontinued Tato Skins, focusing instead on other snack products. Despite their disappearance, Tato Skins remain a nostalgic favorite for those who remember their delicious potato flavor and crispy texture. Get awful hungry between lunch and dinner. That's why Hershey came up with new Rally. It's the Hershey Covered Hunger Stopper. Rally Bar. The Rally Bar was a delicious chocolate bar produced by Mars Incorporated, a renowned candy company. Introduced in the 70s, it boasted a tempting combination of caramel, nougat, and peanuts, all covered in smooth milk chocolate. Sold primarily in the U.S., Rally Bars were priced affordably at 10 to 15 cents, making them a popular choice for chocolate lovers seeking a satisfying treat. Initially, Rally Bars enjoyed significant success, with their indulgent blend of flavors appealing to a wide audience. They were commonly found in grocery stores, convenience stores, and vending machines across the country. However, Rally Bars eventually faced challenges, changes in consumer taste, increased competition in the candy market, and shifting marketing strategies led to declining sales. Mars Inc. discontinued the Rally Bar, focusing instead on other candy products in their portfolio. The last Rally Bar rolled off the production line, leaving a sweet but fleeting memory for chocolate enthusiasts. However, could Velaments, with their innovative sugar-free formula, have provided a refreshing breath of success in a market saturated with changing taste and fierce competition? Take my breath away. Oh, ho, sugar-free Velaments. Now that's a cool, clean taste I've been singing about. The Velaments. Velaments were sugar-free mints introduced by Warner Lambert in the 1970s. These mints came in a variety of flavors like peppermint, spearmint, and wintergreen, appealing to those seeking a fresh breath solution without the sugar. Sold in convenience stores, drug stores, and grocery stores across the U.S., Velaments typically cost around 25 to 50 cents per pack. Initially, Velaments enjoyed moderate success, particularly among individuals concerned about their dental health or sugar intake. However, as the market for sugar-free products expanded, competition increased from other mint brands offering similar benefits. Also, changing consumer preferences and the rise of alternative breath fresheners like gums and breath strips contributed to a decline in Velaments popularity. By the early 2000s, Warner Lambert discontinued the production of Velaments due to dwindling sales and shifting market dynamics. While they may no longer be available, Velaments are remembered as a pioneering sugar-free breath mint that offered a refreshing solution for oral hygiene. How about... Uh-uh, not that. How about... No, no, no. Clark Bar. Oh boy, yes, that's it, that's it, a Clark Bar. Clark Bar. The Clark Bar, produced by the D.L. Clark Company, was a beloved candy bar with a crispy peanut butter and taffy core coated in chocolate. Introduced in the early 1900s, it became a staple treat in the United States. Sold in candy stores and grocery stores nationwide, the Clark Bar typically cost around 10 to 15 cents. Initially, the Clark Bar enjoyed considerable success, appealing to those with a sweet tooth and a love for peanut butter and chocolate combinations. However, as the candy market evolved and larger confectionery companies gained dominance, the Clark Bar struggled to compete. Changes in consumer preferences and the rise of competing candy bars led to a decline in sales. Despite efforts to revitalize the brand over the years, including ownership changes and recipe modifications, the Clark Bar ultimately ceased production in 2018. And nowadays, when I send my little Anna there, I know she will have a wonderful time too, because it's the simple things that make life so rich. Milkfuls. Milkfuls were delightful hard candies filled with a creamy milk center introduced by the Hershey Company in the late 1990s. These candies offered a unique twist on traditional hard candies, providing a smooth and creamy taste experience. Sold primarily in the United States, Milkfuls could be found in grocery stores, convenience stores, and candy aisles, typically priced at around 99 cents to $1.49 per pack. Initially, Milkfuls gained popularity among candy lovers looking for something different from the usual fruit-flavored or mint candies. Their creamy filling and rich taste appealed to a wide audience. However, despite early success, Milkfuls faced challenges in maintaining its market share. 
Competition from other candy brands and changing consumer preferences contributed to declining sales. By the mid-2000s, Hershey's discontinued Milkfuls due to their inability to meet sales expectations and the company's focus on more profitable products. While Milkfuls are no longer available, they remain a fond memory for those who enjoyed their creamy indulgence. Butter nuts. It's buttery. Nuttery. Buttery. Nuttery. Butternut Bar The Butternut Bar was a delightful candy bar produced by the Curtis Candy Company in the early 20th century. It featured a delicious combination of chocolate, caramel, and nuts, providing a satisfyingly sweet and crunchy treat. Sold across the U.S. in candy stores and convenience stores, the Butternut Bar typically cost around 5 to 10 cents. Initially, the Butternut Bar enjoyed significant success becoming a popular choice among candy enthusiasts for its rich flavors and satisfying texture. However, its production faced challenges during World War II due to shortages of ingredients like sugar and nuts. After the war, changes in consumer preferences and increased competition from larger candy companies led to a decline in sales. The Curtis Candy Company eventually discontinued the Butternut Bar in the 1970s as part of a restructuring effort. As candy enthusiasts indulged in the rich flavors of the butternut bar, little did they know that decades later, another iconic treat would captivate taste buds. But what would be the fate of the score bar, introduced with its delectable blend of toffee and chocolate in the face of changing consumer taste and fierce competition? But I can't make our squash game. Later. There's one indulgence that never lets you down. Score. Rich milk chocolate with a crisp toffee center. John Darling, it's Angela. Score Bar. The Score Bar was a delectable confection introduced by the Hershey Company in the early 1980s. This thin, hard toffee bar covered in milk chocolate quickly gained popularity for its rich buttery flavor. Sold in various retail outlets across the U.S., including grocery stores and convenience stores, the Score Bar typically cost around 50 to 75 cents. Initially, the Score Bar was a success, appealing to those who enjoyed the combination of crunchy toffee and smooth chocolate. However, despite its popularity, the Score Bar faced stiff competition from other candy bars with similar flavor profiles. Additionally, Changing consumer preferences towards healthier snack options contributed to a decline in sales. Ultimately, Hershey discontinued the score bar in the early 2000s as part of a strategic decision to focus on more profitable products. Although it's no longer available, the score bar left a lasting legacy as a beloved treat for those who appreciated its indulgent combination of toffee and chocolate. Our new nerd cereal is... Which side? Orange flavor on this side. Cherry flavor on this side. Nerd Cereal Nerd Cereal was an innovative breakfast option inspired by the popular Nerds candy produced by Ralston Purina in the 1980s. It featured dual compartments within each box, each containing a different flavor of cereal resembling the tiny colorful Nerds candy. Sold in grocery stores across the U.S., Nerd cereal typically cost around two to three dollars per box. Initially, Nerd cereal enjoyed moderate success, capitalizing on the popularity of the candy and offering a unique breakfast experience. Children were particularly drawn to the vibrant colors and playful concept of the cereal. However, despite its initial popularity, sales of Nerd cereal declined over time. Factors contributing to its demise included changing consumer preferences for healthier breakfast options and stiff competition from more established cereal brands. Ultimately, Ralston Purina discontinued Nerd Cereal in the early 1990s as it struggled to maintain its market share. Savers family just got a little smaller. New Lifesavers Hose. Tiny little bites of candy in all your favorite Lifesavers flavors. Lifesavers Holes. Lifesavers Holes were tiny, bite sized versions of the iconic Lifesavers candy. Produced by the Wrigley Company, they were introduced in the 1990s and sold in various retail outlets across the U.S., including grocery stores, convenience stores, and candy shops. A pack of Lifesavers Holes typically cost around 25 to 50 cents. Initially, 
Lifesavers Holes enjoyed moderate success, offering consumers a convenient and portable version of the classic Lifesavers candy. They were popular among children and adults alike for their tangy and fruity flavors. However, despite their initial popularity, sales of Lifesavers Holes began to decline over time. Changing consumer preferences, increased competition from other candy brands, and shifting marketing strategies all contributed to the discontinuation of Lifesavers Holes. The Wrigley Company ceased production of Lifesavers Holes in the early 2000s, focusing instead on their core products. Today, Lifesavers Holes are remembered as a nostalgic candy that once delighted taste buds but has since faded into obscurity.